We're back in the Kia Sorento. We, we had the hybrid before. Well, this is the X-Line trim package, which means it rides one inch higher than your normal Sorentos. Now with more power and off-roady goodness. You're watching Everyday Driver. We make a TV show, podcast, and YouTube channels dedicated to great cars, driving adventures, and helping you find a car you'll love. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. This is good. It seems like Kia has this handbook to how to make good cars and trucks lately. They have figured something out and now are the standard to which every other car company should be looking at their cars and trucks thinking, huh, yeah, that's pretty good. We should, we should aim for them. They that's systematically, the general feel you yes, get when you get in this thing. They systematically went and hired everybody that worked yes, with German manufacturers yes, in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh -huh. and made those the definitive years for places like BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Yep. Those folks all work for Hyundai and Kia now. Design and, and you engineering. you can tell. Yes. You can absolutely tell. Yeah. Well, let's start a little bit with the styling, and that is yeah. uh, Kia's excellent styling in play once again. They have been nominated for the Sorento for a 2021 World Car of the Year Awards. Mm. They were a finalist. They did not win, but they were a finalist for the Sorento and the K5, actually. Yeah. And look at the front hood edge repeated around the back mm. rear, little ducktail spoiler back there. And the surfaces don't have any bloat in them anymore. They're uh, tucked in. It's like mm. this thing's doing CrossFit or something now. But the surfaces are clean and tight and everything's more crisp and it looks more purposeful. And that was the entire point of the Kia yeah. design team to do more rugged, down to the point where the marketing materials tell us the air vents look like athletic weights, like barbells, like strong. Oh, really? Is that what they're Can going for? Can you see for? it now? Uh, no, uh, no, it's a okay. stretch. It's a stretch. I totally. actually complimented those vents the last time we were in a Sorento. We were in the yeah. hybrid. I actually like that they have them split. You can point different vents at different parts it's of your body. You great. used to be able to do that in old cars of the 70s and 80s. It's back now thanks to Kia, which is not something I expected to say. I'm kind of surprised there's not a crotch vent down here. There, the, you, I agree. Well, but this, you can use the side you, you vent kind for that. Of can. You, can, you can get there, you and kind the vents, of can. The vents yeah. can actually cool you off. So many people are doing <laughs> small, tiny vents that actually don't blow air around the cabin. Are, this is are one these of my meeting current, your right? approval? They're, they're okay. Because they're, they're up higher and the screen's above that. Exactly. They're a little higher. That's okay. the benefit of the SUV. I'm sorry, but the vents need to be high and they need to be pointed at your upper body. Well, Somebody else got them down by the knees. Vents that just pop down and like blow him in the face. Instead of doing the extra do little that? gauges here in the A pillar, let's put vents in there. Let's get just this done. Run HVAC everywhere. You. Yes. Vents. We've got airbags everywhere. Let's solve the HVAC problem. I'm telling you. I'm really fine with it. We've actually solved another problem that was with the, the hybrid uh, Sorento. That one did not have cooled seats. So now that yes. this one has heated and cooled seats, we see why they have the single directional that, button for that heated and cooled. It doesn't, it? it doesn't make it any more ergonomic though. It explains why it works no, by but toggling, but it doesn't make it any more ergonomic. It, it cleans up the switches so you don't yeah. have, you know, uh -huh. two buttons and all that kind of stuff. So, well, this is the X line, which means this is aimed more at the off-roady kind yes. of feeling, mm -hmm. which we're about to go drive up one of our favorite roads. It yep. is a neighborhood, but it is just a, about what this is suited for. It's kind of a neighborhood for trucks only. It, it runs out of pavement and then goes, good luck. Yeah, So that's much. really what happens. This does have a locking center diff. It has an eight inch, just over eight inch of ground clearance. Yeah, which is pretty and good. This X line does have a different front and rear fascia to be more rugged. Well, yeah. But the thing I'm most impressed by is the fact that this got some genuine power. Yeah, it did. It did. Two and a half liter turbo. It has a significantly bigger engine than the than the hybrid. Of course, it does because it's not the hybrid. But this has got good horsepower. It absolutely does. Bolted to an eight speed dual clutch transmission. Full dual clutch. Yes. These don't creep very well. They don't creep like an automatic transmission That's true. does. That's true. And so. You can't expect it to creep forward with your DCT like you're used to. It, it kind of surges a little bit, mm -hmm. but what it's done for this thing is this drives more quickly and nimbly than it should. It feels very athletic. It, if you put your foot in it on a straight on the highway, I think you'll be genuinely surprised by the power. Are you in sport? Oh, you're in smart. I'm in smart because I don't mode. know where the actual... Well, hang on, hang on. Here's the you lock. Gotta, you got to lock this puppy. Okay, lock right. that. We've locked the center diff. And off roady goodness is, is your occurring. traction control off. You've got to be able to, you know, spin it a little bit. <laughs> this road got worse. 
It does every year. Well, this good. Is, this is the worst time for this road every year. It's just after the snow melts. <laughs> it's not nearly good. as muddy as I feared, but that's okay. I'm in full center diff lock, and uh, I'm actually acting like I've got off roady goodness now. But again, 280 horsepower, 311 pound feet of torque is mm -hmm. a lot in this. It almost, it's, it, it's not quite double what it was in the hybrid, but it feels like it. Granted, the hybrid this filled in moves. some. This, this thing really moves like power. it shouldn't. It, it does. I totally and agree with that. That, that with yeah. the transmission, mm -hmm. it shouldn't do as well. It shouldn't feel this lightweight. The, the dual clutch hammers through those eight speeds. The only yeah. weirdness I've found with this drivetrain, back to the thing you were saying mm -hmm. with creep, is the fact that when you have the auto stop start working mm -hmm. and you come to a stop, it's especially a in the morning when it's really cold, it, it almost kind of stumbles and kills itself when it gets to a light, fights the dual clutch, and then the auto off on, and then it suddenly kind of stumbles and catches itself like a car that's not running It's trying well. to fight everything. And it, it does that for the, the first few starts and stops yeah. in the morning. Of course, then I turn the start stop off and never see that again. Well, but the problem that is seems it's a default. Be, it is. That's that seems to be like a, a, a angry UN discussion between the eight-speed <laughs> dual clutch and the engine and the stop start. They, they just don't get along very well here. <laughs> All right, so we're off roady here a little bit. Uh, we're utilizing our one inch extra ground clearance. You better believe it. And but, that, that locking diff making well, all yes. the difference. The thing is, it does have that locking diff, but for the most part, I believe this is more front wheel drive biased because this is a torque distribution kind yes. of all wheel drive system, yes. which means it's looking for wheel slip mm -hmm. and it's probably throwing most of it to the front wheels it is. when you're driving, which is fine. You can actually tell that because if you surprise the system, and you can, yeah. with getting on the power all of a sudden, it has front axle torque steer for a split second L little bit. before it throws it at the rear and it sorts itself out. You get that yeah. kind of, am I in a hot hat? Well, no, I'm in an SUV. When the turbo kicks. Yes, and, absolutely. And it, just it does a little light, bit. Because it has yeah. a lot of power. Uh -huh. So you get that initial torque steer and then it sorts itself out. When families are looking for the do it all, you can't ignore the Sorento. And we love the Telluride and Palisade that are yes. above this mm -hmm. in price and size. But this just seems to be well played, well placed in the market. And really, every car company should be looking at this one to think uh, amenities and what people are looking for in a modern car. For families, for space, mm -hmm. for the usage. Because, yeah, this is not your boulder crawling kind of thing. It doesn't need to be. It's We're doing this. We're doing fire roads. We're doing light off-road camping kinds I, of yeah. to the campsite thing. It's perfect for that. It's I am so surprised well done. at the huge range of ways they're offering this Sorento. Mm -hmm. This being the more off-roady flavor, and of course we had the hybrid version. Off-roady flavor. And, and so those are like the bookends of the lineup. Yeah. But also, as we talked about before, this is not a large seven-seater. They refer to this as either a four or five, depending on your second row, plus two. So it has yeah, yeah. back seats when you must have them. It's a back seats or cargo situation, which is the same case as the last Sorento. Works. It will work kinda for a works. lot of people. It depends on how you use your car. If you need a yep. full seven seater, this just isn't big enough and you have to go tell your right. Totally Palisade. fine. Totally fine. But they this offer is that, also though. absolutely they have one is, available. This is also a world car. Because the sure. Telluride is not. The Telluride is a North America car. So this is <laughs> the large size alone. This is the large yeah. SUV from Kia. Now this is the fourth gen of mm -hmm. the Sorento and I would say mm -hmm. it's the first one that looks the part. Finally I'm telling you, the styling had to not be so bubbly and bloated yeah. and pull just it soft back to, too. Yeah. Yeah. And Look at the lines. Look at what it's done to our perception about yeah. kind of doing a little bit of light off-roading. It, it, it was looks cool looking. like more of an off-roader than mm -hmm. it even still is. Yeah. But at the same time, I Who mean, I, honestly, Who I cares? could be doing this road without the, the center diff. Yeah. I just wanted to be able to say I could lock it. So that feels exciting. We got it. it. Let's yeah. use it. Uh -huh, right? For sure. Yep. From an interior standpoint, there's so much space in this. You'll think, what a great size. What mm -hmm. a well thought out kind of size. Look at everything that is so useful and falls to hand easily like door handles they're huge mm -hmm. they're well designed but they're also really useful yep. that's kind of the thinking you'll find all the way around the kia and that is huh, air vents that kind of are useful and buttons that sort of fall to hand you've got navigation hvac and then everything having to do with the running gear and drivetrain it's this hierarchy which is really well thought through it's quick very power break mercedes like Oh yeah, yeah. See, that's that's a lot of power even here on this back road. It's just it, that's the thing. I'm surprised every time I put my foot in it. In this, is I'm surprised by how much power mm -hmm. it actually does have hiding because it doesn't. Normal programming, it doesn't really want to show it to you, but it's there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, hey, snow's still up here. Great. We avoided the worst of the mud. That's good news. Why is there a tricycle on top of that sign? That's kind of because weird. Uh, they didn't need it anymore. So this goes here. 
okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, this interior is very Mercedes-like in here. It's they're hinting at that, aren't they? Yeah. Very much so. But they're kind of putting their own twist on it. And I like that they're exploring materials. They say open pour wood. And it really does feel like the price. It even feels a little bit above its price level of about $44,000. Yeah. I get in and I think, well, they're killing it. Everywhere you look and you touch and you think, okay, this is setting a standard to be honest they are doing well for the price my only concern with this one which of course is everything it's even more than we had in the hybrid i mean we get because again we've got heated and cooled seats we've got all the yep. off-road running it's gear fully, everything fully this, loaded this will come with yep. you're within five grand of a mostly loaded telluride there and is a little bit a of a lot of families the telluride yeah. makes more sense Again, this is a world car. There's, there's markets where this it's is your the pricing option. game. But I yeah. do think that this is close enough to the Telluride that it's worth the bump up. Mm. Unless, mm. unless you are a family where this size works for you. Because there's no point in buying a bigger car than you need because it just starts to feel larger. Right. And this is an interesting size. Right. But if you're a family that is looking for it, like seven seats matter, this is so close to the Telluride in features and price, I would jump up. I mean, this is the better option than a minivan, for sure. It's more interesting, for sure, yeah. And the rear seat space, great for normal human beings. You're right. Excellent. Yep. Mm -hmm. We can fit back there. And so it feels sort of like even if you don't have kids and you've got, you know, well, grown kids or just, you know, mm -hmm. you, you take people a lot, it feels useful for that, too. It doesn't just feel like kid mobile, family mobile. No, it doesn't. It, it's a little bit above that or it, it's kind of flexible in between things. I think it's excellent. I want to drive this thing. You need to drive it. You need to bounce around off road. Oh, it. yeah. Door handles. Yes, they, they should be fine. They're like carabiners. Well, this does have paddles, which you might think, why does it have paddles? But then you're reminded it's got that eight-speed dual clutch. The fact that it's, it's dual, dual clutch makes clutch. it worth it for sure, absolutely. A lot of times we get paddles and it's like, really, paddles on something like this. But once you put a dual clutch in something, mm -hmm. okay, now paddles genuinely make sense. Okay, so we're in first, mm -hmm. starting out, pretty washboarded road. But this is a really serious contender. If you're looking at the Germans and you're wondering, hmm, I either am afraid of German maintenance or I'm afraid of the cost, yeah. and you really want something that is useful, and now with the warranty, build quality, it's hard to say no to this. It's really tough. It, I'm telling you, it's like they have a handbook on what people are looking for. They have the old German handbook cars. is what's happened. The Germans have decided yeah. to move on. They have the old German handbook, and it still works. That's what's going on it's here. Just excellent. I do have to say that that's a two and a half liter four-cylinder with a turbo under there mm -hmm. and while it does give really good power it of course sounds like a four-cylinder which is not pleasing and the other thing is I Whatever. I keep being surprised at the amount of power it feels like you know Kia has that really good three and a half liter twin turbo monster that they put yeah, in right. things like the, the Telluride right. in there the G70 and all kinds of stuff in the Hyundai Kia lineup this feels almost that powerful in this and it's a significantly smaller motor yeah I'm really focused on steering inputs and ride quality right now. And you're on a terrible road. I'm on a terrible road, yeah. and it's it's doing really well. I mean, mm -hmm. this uh, there's a lot of potholes on here, but I would much prefer this over any pickup truck, mm. and I prefer it over a lot of SUVs. It, it's pretty stiff and kind of yeah. crisp in places. <laughs> <laughs> we get thrown. Yeah, it's it's not it's not a, a cushy ride, and of course you get but back road and it feels more so. It feels pretty tight. It feels yeah. pretty controlled. No, I agree down, with that. Yeah. Which is impressive. Downshift here. Probably going a little fast. A little bit for the road, but, but it's okay. Road, but, well, but, here's the you thing. Know, You're not going fast testing. for us, but based on how most people drive this yeah, road, right. you are bombing down I, this road. I, yes. I feel the need to bomb in uh -huh. this thing. Impressive truck, car, SUV, what are we SUV. calling this? That's, that's, it's, a, yeah. it's a seven seater, even though it's not. It's a plus two back there, but yeah. What's fun is, every time I get in an SUV, I think, how can you and I recommend this on the podcast? Mm. Who, who are we recommending yeah, this yeah. for? And I think, am I feeling shame by sitting here and enjoying the driving experience? And on this one, not. Interesting. There's still, it's an SUV. It doesn't handle or feel really great. But I'm kind of feeling something. There's just mm -hmm. some crisp things there. There's the power, there's the dual clutch, and then it just starts to drive well. And then you put, you know, the usefulness like we're experiencing, mm -hmm. combine all that together, and there's, I'm liking this. I, I admit, I 
Yeah. It's excellent. I do think of this in comparison to one of our all-time favorites that we recommend a lot, which is the Mazda CX-5. Okay. Fair, fair. Which is smaller than this. Yeah. I think about oh, the yeah. families where the CX-5 is a little on the small side. I think this is what you step up to. Because you're not going full seven-seater. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going a really big boy and you're worried about space. But you need a little more size. I think this is the right place. Also, oh, if you get a loaded out CX-5, you're looking at 38 or so. Like loaded mm -hmm. completely. Mm -hmm. That is in the middle of the price range of this Sorento. Yeah. And it's as much as we spent on that hybrid, actually, that we had was about 38 39 So if, if the CX-5 is just not quite big enough, this is the good size to step up to. And then also, if you want, you can get the more off-road capability. The CX-5 leans more toward miles per gallon and nice interior. And this one, commute, specifically like yeah. this, is leaning more toward a little bit of off-roadness. That's interesting. So I think that might be where this fits, because you, you can't quite step up into the big boys. This is that weird middle ground. That's, that's great. This is the small step up. Yep. It's the stutter step in between you need those that, two. That, yeah. You know, more space. Mm -hmm. Because the CX-5 and the, all, all those straight-up five-seaters don't offer you a back row at all. This kind of does. It's like the emergency back row. It is. But it also yeah. has good styling and decent scale. I, I think it's it's a weird middle ground. A lot of people should be in the Telluride instead. But if you're you, trying well, to stay on the smaller side, bigger. you're trying to stay on the smaller side. This overlaps the Telluride enough in features and price that I think the Telluride starts to make more sense. And I said that in the last Sorento too. Mm -hmm. The last mm -hmm. Sorento was beneficial because it had hybrid. This one is because it is loaded out and you did get that more off-roady focused feel. I, I do see that. But uh, it's the off-rodeo again on no, Everyday that's Driver. Ford. Yeah. Ford oh, you're right. is there It's the Ford off-rodeo. You're right. I, sorry. But what am no, I doing I, bringing that into elsewhere? I don't yeah. know. I do agree with you. We get into all the product from Kia and Hyundai right now and we find ourselves impressed. Mm -hmm. And somebody out there is saying, well, yeah, but let's see how it is in five years. But the warranties here are great, too. Yeah. That's the other thing about They've it is if it you, know, you can buy the more expensive Germans or even some cases the more expensive American cars. And you can say, yeah, but this is going to last longer. But those warranties aren't nearly as long. Yeah, agreed. And everybody who gets in this, we give rides to or joins yeah. us while we're driving it, yeah. looks around and says, wow, yeah, I'm, I'm really having trouble finding fault with this. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not for everybody because of the size. Yep. And I think it's okay though. We got it. Can we? Uh, we should unlock the diff. Unlock. I'm going back to sporty goodness. Sporty goodness. Yes. And now we're away. And it is funny yeah, that there's a little crazy. bit of torque steer at the front, and then it settles. Actually, okay because it's there's funny. some personality there. It gives there. you a hot hatch feel yeah. for just a split second. Yeah. The family hot hatch for sure. Well, that's just it. For parents who want something fun to drive but really can't own a sports car. This is a contender. This is a genuine. There's just a little bit of sport. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. can feel it right there. Surprising That's amount of power. Great. Every time I drive this and push it hard, I'm surprised by the power. I mean, we're moving. Yeah, we are. And like I said, there's just a hint of fun. Yep. It, yeah, it's very vague. Steering feel wise, it's vague. It's it's That's that okay. entire market segment. It yeah. really is. Yeah. But you can kind of chuck this in a little bit. There's a little bit of chuck in it to chuck. Chuck it in, kind of. Well, feeling. okay. Well, here's the thing, though. I think that there's not That's any impressive. information in the steering, but it's there's enough. no slop in the chassis. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't. You don't get into a corner because here we are. We're on Interstate 80, where it actually has a surprising amount of corners through here, so which means they're high-speed corners, and it's the kind of stuff that the average person driving in a straight line for hours is suddenly surprised by corners like this. The car <laughs> yeah. operates in a way that makes sense and doesn't give you any surprises or any random body movement. So while there's no information from the steering, the car doesn't do anything surprising or anything that doesn't feel buttoned down. You're right. That it, The chassis is very controlled. And that being despite a one-inch extra ground clearance. True. Or riding True. higher than, you know, uh, Yeah, the standard Sorento, Sorento did even better. I do, yeah. I do agree with that. Yep. Which, you give it a little bit of power. Turbo boost comes in. Yep. That great dual clutch. That's what's so surprising is they're willing to do more. They're willing to just go that little bit of extra mile, yeah. which is paying off for them tremendously. And I, I feel that in everything. I sense that from design to mechanics. They're just they're going a little bit more than other car companies would let themselves. This market segment, candidly, doesn't need a dual clutch. It doesn't make it any doesn't. sense. It and doesn't. And yet they have one in the quiver, and so they put it in this. This comes with three different transmissions because the hybrid mm -hmm. has a six-speed. Yes. There's a standard eight-speed automatic available elsewhere, and then the upper-level trims, including this X-Line, get the eight-speed dual clutch. That's three Wait, transmissions. Who's offering that? Multiple engine options. Yeah. Hybrid, non, off-road, non. This is clearly a world car because it comes in every flavor sure, imaginable. Sure, sure. 
and then now we're back on freeway. Yep. And it's smooth and comfortable. Let's go to comfort. Yeah. And it'll upshift one more, hopefully. Of course it will, yeah. There we go. Yeah, and now it's your road trip car. Yep. And it's just interesting to look at. There's visual interest here. It is going to look good for a long time. They're forward looking, but they're restrained in their styling. Yeah, I would have never cool. thought seriously about a Sorento prior to this. And this I is agree. actually pretty good. It yeah. was just sort of the forgettable, yeah, we've got to meet this segment. We have something in segment. this market segment, yeah. Mm -hmm. But now, this is the one everybody should be looking at. Unless you need the Telluride. Unless you need to go bigger. <laughs>